for starters, let's begin. A few of you did keep your hand up all the way through. Does anyone want to give me, as brief as they can, what is absolute value about? What is it? Yeah, yeah it's about it. taking out the negative of an integer. Okay, so when you think about integers, they can be positive and negative. Okay, absolute value is closely connected to taking away the negative. Like things can only be positive. Okay, that's a good start. Thinking about positive. Anything else you want to add on to that? Yeah, Maya. Okay, so this absolute value idea is very closely connected to distance, which I'm going to work into my definitions in a minute. Okay. Something that I've heard so far from all of you is it's about numbers, right? I can take the absolute value of this number or that number, or I can find the distance between this number or that number. As Extension 1 students, we're going to expand this a little bit. Think about the absolute values, not just of numbers, but of whole functions. Remember I showed you this just now? Right, like that. And then I showed you this, which is not a very good example. But we're going to apply absolute values, not just to numbers, but to entire algebraic objects. Okay? So I'm going to give you, let me count it, one, two, three definitions for what an absolute value is. Definitions. And the first thing you need to know is what an absolute value is, in terms of notation, is these two long vertical lines. Um, the actual technical name for the symbol is a pipe, but I'm just going to call them absolute value signs. Okay? So when you see them around, they have to be quite long because you don't want to, um, if you've got something like the absolute value of negative 1, you don't want it to look like 1 take away 11. Okay? So make them nice and long so you can actually distinguish and say, oh right, that's what you're talking about. Be obvious and exaggerated just so you don't misread your okay. The absolute value of A equals now, I'm going to introduce some function notation. I wonder how many of you remember this from last year. Okay? What this means is the absolute value of A can be one of two things, and I'll tell you what they are. The absolute value of A is just A if A is positive or zero. Actually, it doesn't matter where this inequality goes. Okay? So for example, the absolute value of 5 is just 5. Right? It's a positive number, it stays positive. Okay. Alternatively, if it's not positive, if A is negative, okay. for example, the absolute value of negative 1, if I go to Shannon's definition, it's just 1. You take away the negative sign. It's gone, disappeared. Another way you can think about it is like, what's the size of this number? Don't worry about which way it's facing. I don't care if it's going that way or going that way. Just tell me how big it is. Okay. Now, how do I express this in this scheme? If A is positive, then the absolute value is just A. But if A is negative, then this is actually negative, negative 1. So I have to slap an extra negative sign on it to sort of cancel them out. So this is my formal definition. And I think this is kind of the most fundamental one. Bit of a mouthful, but it's the most reliable because you can always use it. When we go to functions, it becomes the most useful for sorting out which one is which. Okay. All right, definition two. So that was one one. Number two. One of the ways that you can get rid of the positive or negative, the sign of a number, is first, to square it, right? Because we know you square a negative number and then you don't know whether it was negative, like where you came from. Negative 5, 5, they both have the same square. But of course, you actually have changed the value. So in order to get back, you take the square root. So the square root of a squared isn't actually a. It's the absolute value of a. And I think I looked at this example before. Right? So here, do you see what happens? That squaring gets rid of information. Right? If I were to now cover this, you don't know whether I came from a 5 squared or a negative 5 squared underneath the square root. And what you end up with must be positive regardless. Okay? So this is our second definition. Here comes the last one. The absolute value of A, and I actually think this is the most useful one going forward, is the distance, this is what Amaya was saying, is the distance from A to the origin. It's the distance, uh, the magnitude of how far you've gone. Okay? Now, at the moment, to find the distance of a number from the origin, like, say, 5, right? well, the distance is 5. The distance of negative 5 is also 5. The reason why this becomes more useful is because later on you can learn 
numbers aren't just one dimensional. Numbers can actually be two dimensional and they can inhabit a plane. And this distance definition is really important. Now, I'm going to give you two sort of secondary definitions that come off of this one and this one. From here, we can also take the absolute value of a difference. Okay. Now, I wonder if you can think about this with me. If I change what's inside here from just A to A minus B, again, it's equal to one of two things depending on what A minus B ends up being equal to. Right? So if A minus B, these two numbers, you subtract them, you take the difference, if that ends up being a positive number, right? if A minus B is positive, okay, what would the absolute value of A minus B be? Just like before, you don't change that number. If it's positive, you take the absolute value, it's still the same. But if A minus B happens to be negative, for instance, you don't need to write this, but if I said that, the absolute value of 2 minus 5. Well, you can just work this out like you would work out normal brackets. 2 minus 5, of course, is negative 3. And I know how to deal with this like I did over here. This is 3. In other words, it's no longer 2 minus 5. It's actually 5 minus 2. Do you see that? It's actually flipped around. It's the same as applying a negative sign to everything, just like I did over here. Okay. So, sorry, is it? Does that make sense? Okay, now I said that was a secondary definition if you're taking the absolute value of a difference based on this one. Well, there's another secondary definition. Sorry, this is the Okay, I'm going to go from here. How do I think about the distance that results from this? Actually, I'm gonna, I rubbed it off, but I'm going to write it again. Hmm. This is a distance, right? In both these cases, it's 3, right? We just calculated it. So how would you express this as a distance in relation to this? I'm going to start the sentence by, here's the distance. But how am I going to finish this sentence? When you do the absolute value over here, right, like the absolute value of negative 5, you're starting from the origin. The reason why is you're comparing, where did I write it? Let's just write it again. Actually, no, I have it over here. You're comparing negative 1 with 0. That's the origin. We never write minus 0 because it doesn't change the value of a number. But that's actually what you're comparing from. That's like your point of reference. Here, you've changed your point of reference. You're not comparing from the origin anymore. You're comparing with 2. So it's no longer the distance from A to the origin, it's the distance from A to B. Because of course the difference from 5 to 2 is 3, and the distance from 2 to 5 is still 3. Does that make sense? See how it works out, how this definition is just an expansion of this one. 